Evening everybody. Uh, just thought I'd do another wee, wee video. Uh, I had one that I posted a few years ago. I just uh, thought I'd post a few things to explain what I'm doing. And, uh, this is all about short term field champs. STFT, short term field champs. So, uh, a lot of guys maybe know this, maybe people don't. So, but just to uh, give a wee recap. So, when the thing's running at zero, uh, there's no adjustment. Your short term field champ, it's in percent. So there's no adjustment when it's a zero. That means it's not adding fuel and it's not taking fuel away or subtracting. So normally uh, what's acceptable is 5% plus or minus. I'm gonna do this in the state of Bob Dylan. So uh, <laughs> if you ever see any of his videos, but um, so if you're running lean, uh, so that means there's too much air uh, to fuel ratio um, if there's too much air the car will add fuel to compensate so that would give you a plus so it would be plus 10 15 20 or something like that whenever you get into this range it's, it's telling you there's something not not right uh, this is at idle now this is at idle with an engine with a MAF sensor. So engines that don't have petrol engines, that don't as all petrol engines that don't have a MAF sensor, just run on a MAP sensor, manifold absolute pressure, and uh, they're what's known as a speed density engine. Now things like vacuums and stuff like that don't affect speed density engines just as much. But because the MAF is measuring the amount of air getting into the intake manifold, these short-term fuel trims are crucial, but they're a great wee tool if you can understand what the numbers mean for telling you there's something wrong. So there's a couple of wee quick uh, tests you can do, uh, just be blipping the throttle and tell you. So in the upcoming uh, one and a half minute video, I had a Honda Civic Type R. It had no fault codes, and uh, it was in just in for a service, and I discovered at idle, it was sitting at 15%, plus 15% fuel trims. So that told me that that car was adding, having to add fuel to compensate because it was getting too much air in than what it was measuring on the MAF sensor. So on the flip side of that, if your car's running too rich, so say you've got too much fuel pressure, or there's a leaking injector, injector staying open for too long, or the mass reading wrong. Uh, uh, where these numbers come from is from the data from the O2 sensor uh, before the catalytic converter. So it feeds back, whenever it's in closed loop, it feeds back into the ECU, that's why it's closed loop, and uh, tells the ECU to, to shorten the pulse width of the injection the less in the amount of fuel that goes in. So in this case, however, it's, it's pretty common. And you hear about vacuum leaks an awful lot in a lot of people's videos. P0171, typical fault code for vacuum leaks. Uh, might not be a vacuum leak now. Uh, it could be you have low fuel pressure or something like that. Uh, but very, very common to get vacuum leaks. So on this car, I seen it 15%. And it didn't flag a DTC, a diagnostic trouble code, or an engine management line. And the reason for that is that normally uh, the engine computer strategy, if it goes to 25% or above, some cars are different now. It might have, it might be a 15, it might be somewhere else, but normally in around that 25, it'll flag a DTC. So uh, you could be sitting at 10 or 15 or something like that in around that range and the car will think, well, that's acceptable. It's not too bad and it's okay for that. Depends on other factors, temperature, ambient air temperature, air density, uh, atmospheric uh, pressure and all that sort of thing, barometric pressure. So those are other things you need to check uh, that your barrow uh, is roughly equal to what it is uh, depending on your altitude and all those other sort of factors. 
So, uh, let's go to the next page. So, this is how I found this. Uh, short term fuel trim was plus 15%. That meant it was adding too much fuel and it was telling me it was too much air. So what happens is, uh, when your, your throttle valve is more or less closed, it's not completely closed, and your mass measuring the amount of air going in, this is at atmosphere. So we, we had, we suspected that we had a leak coming from somewhere. So that meant there was air getting in that the math wasn't reading when past it. So, uh, it was getting air in the lambda sensor at the at the output then or O2 sensor it was saying uh, oh that's a that's a lean condition there so it ordered the EC then to add more fuel on the next pulse so that's the loop that's the closed loop now how I found it was I blip the throttle or hold the throttle at about 2,000 revs and what that does is it opens the throttle to atmosphere so whenever it opens the throttle to atmosphere the leak doesn't really matter anymore uh, because this is open this is now open and that is open the whole time so it doesn't really make any difference so your short term fuel trims come down to in around that zero could be plus two or three, something like that. So if you hold the throttle about 2,000 revs, one and a half to 2,000 RP RPM, uh, the leak isn't really relevant anymore. And it's because this in that, in that manifold is open, because this valve is open. We're here, it's closed. So what I did in this case was uh, <coughs> you can normal thing is to smoke the in that manifold put smoke in it, but in this case, as you can see, what I did was I started pinching off a few lines, and what we have is the brake booster or the servo, and there's a vacuum line. It's fed from the uh, in that manifold, so that's a vacuum line, and that's the. Uh, brake servo so what I did was take that pipe off and block that there with my finger just put my finger over and my short term fuel terms short term fuel terms came down to near enough zero when I did that so I knew that I had a leak so more than likely you would have thought it was a leak in the line but in this case here it was the seal with the master cylinder uh, bolts on to the to the servo itself so it was that we see in there and how I tested it was I put I took this pipe off completely and put a bit of fuel line on that connector and a blew through it with uh, just blowing through it with my mouth and I spread a bit of, a bit of soapy water on there and I've seen the bubbles coming out. So hope you enjoy the video. It's only about one and a half minutes long and uh, you'll just see that in action. Okay, thanks.